last week I talked about a guy I used to work with who got a makeover, right. uh, a one day makeover and became the baddest looking dude. And uh, people told me they liked that story. And I just wanted to say that today I saw on Twitter a little short video clip of the game Saga Emerald Beyond, which is releasing on April 25th, uh, which is uh, produced by uh, the creator of the series, Akitoshi Kawazu, who was the, the Saga guy at Squaresoft. He made a Final Fantasy II for the Famicom. And, you know, everybody knows Kawazu. We all know this guy. But what many people might not acknowledge is that I think he's the best dressed dude in video games. And whenever people say, who's the best dressed dude in video games, I always think Kawazu. And there just hasn't been a whole lot of public appearances of the guy lately. So I've been like hesitant to say, right? But anyway, there's a trailer today that just shows him in there. And what a suit he's wearing. He's wearing a wonderful suit. So uh, you want to look at how big that lapel is on that suit. I posted it in the host chat. And he's wearing a tie that is uh, on theme with the name of the game, Saga Emerald Beyond. He has like an emerald green colored tie. So this guy in old photos looks like your classic 80s Japanese computer programmer guy wearing like uh, like a sumo wrestler hand-me-down polo shirt and, you know, big giant hair, big massive glasses. And at one point he got he he made himself over to look like a corporate executive. And every time I see the guy, I marvel at how nice his suits are. That lapel. Look at that lapel. I want everybody to start looking at lapels on suits. It's really not my style, this one. I, I don't like a big lapel this much. It gets too close to his shoulder. Brandon buys his suits from a guy behind the Spirit Halloween store. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I, get, I get my suits custom made. Yeah, front by the guy on the outside behind the like, Spirit Halloween store. I've seen your suits, Brandon. Your suit would disintegrate if it came within a foot of mine. Okay, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> your suit would blow up. Protocol 3, protect the podcast. This is issue 333 of the Insert Credit Magazine, a show where three video game experts are kept on topic by a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe, and my top three fruit flavors are as follows. Number three, orange. Number two, cherry. Number one, grape. All right. Uh, I'm Frank Cifaldi. Um... My top three fruit flavors. I'm, I'm going to. Uh, Are we talking about we're real talking candy? I'm, I'm assuming candy. Okay, candy. Like because it's uh, like flavors implies not fruit, right? Yeah. So I left it open enough that you could answer it if you're not a candy person. I'm gonna go Jolly Rancher here. Top three Jolly Rancher flavors. Um, I like the uh, tart Jolly Ranchers. So uh, I'm gonna go. Um, what are my options here? Uh, number three, uh, I believe there was a cherry. I haven't had Jolly Ranchers in like over two decades, probably. Um, number two would be uh, watermelon. And then mm. uh, number one is uh, green apple. Green apple's the top Jolly Rancher. Wonderful. Thank you. I thought so too. Yeah. Uh, I'm Tim Rogers and uh, I don't do fruit flavors. Uh, I, I don't do them. I, I don't eat fruit. Uh, uh, there's real fruits that I like, which uh, number one would be mango. Number two would be fig. Uh, however, I I don't I don't I don't do the fruit flavored candy. If I have a lozenge, it's always like a mint or a herb, you know, or like a honey or a, or a propolis or something. It's it's not fruit flavor, and I never never much liked uh, never much liked, for example, Jolly Ranchers. Uh, they're just uh, tiny stickless lollipops, as far as I'm concerned. Um, some would call honey nature's fruit. Yeah, it's it's not. <laughs> na- yeah, honey's not any kind of a fruit at all. Um, it's uh, let's not let's not spread misinformation here. Uh, it's not any kind of a fruit at all. It's not any kind of a fruit at all. Like like, don't try to compare it to fruit. Um, but uh, real life fruits, figs and mangoes, and there's other fruits, but they're all distant. They're they're all too distant from the figs and the mangoes to really kind of count for anything. To be honest. Um, a distant first and second. Yeah, so I, I usually uh, I usually eat figs and mangoes together, but that's like once a year when I eat some fruit, which I didn't actually eat it once in 2023. So there was none of it in 2023 um, and none of it so far in 2024. So it's been about two years since I've had a piece of fruit. So thank you. Well, I'm Brandon Sheffield and my dogs are barking. Uh, <laughs> you should oh, put your been feet walking up. a lot, huh? Boy, are yeah. my arms tired, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I flew and I walked. 
Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so uh, top three fruit flavors in real fruit and in fake fruit, it's quite different. Oh, yeah. No, that's, let's that's hear, implied. We all down. know that. Yeah. We all know that. Just answer the damn question. <laughs> so but I'm, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to go for fake fruit here, and I can think of my top two, but the, th- the, the third is a tough one. I'm going to say... Well, let's boy. hear your top two, and then maybe we can collectively figure out, like reverse engineer what number three okay. is. Okay. Number two, watermelon. Mm-hmm. Number one blue raspberry because i feel like if you're if we're talking mm. fruit flavors the fakest one is that's that's the top of the heap my color blindness as a child meant that i would get blue raspberry and grape mixed up a lot so when i would bite into something and get blue raspberry when i was expecting grape it would be quite the disappointment so mm. I have negative associations with that flavor. I would have been quite pleased myself. Yeah. The watermelon, blue raspberry. So you like the sort of tart. I do like stuff, the tart like ones. Yeah. Some I sort of liked a lemon, but lemon is so it's so normal and it's just kind of straight acidic. It doesn't really well, what, give what, you. Where's, where's cherry here? I think I think you must appreciate cherry. Uh, cherry I felt didn't often give the actual tartness. It was quite often mm, yeah, just yeah. sweet, and so so. Cherry. Yeah, fake, fake cherry is pretty depressing, to be honest. I, I swerved off the path. So I think actually what I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with grape, but the kind of grape that you got in the the little gumballs that came with tiny robots, ja- Japanese mm-hmm. tiny oh. gumball grape, which is like more of a, uh, like a fake cassis flavor, I think. That's what I'm going to go with, because that's one that I can remember. So that, that'll that be num- my number three. I'll take it. I'm, I'm just glad no one said banana. Oh, aren't you glad? Orange, orange I'm banana. glad that no one said banana, because uh, the banana fruit fruit fake flavor is uh, pretty gross. Uh, it's, 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 it's too abort. overpowering. Yeah. It's, uh, bananas themselves are pretty good. but Oh, yeah. 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 So I've broken today's episode into three subsections. Uh, we're going to start with three normal questions. Uh, for our first section. Love normalcy. Uh, Tim Rogers was the winner of last week's episode, and he suggested that the number three was important to the architecture of the Freemasons, and mm-hmm. I should incorporate that into the show somehow. So yeah. today I ask, what are your favorite video game conspiracy theories? Like conspiracy oh. theories about video games? <laughs> about or in? You know, isn't uh, should we really talk about these on here, or should we all start YouTube channels and become millionaires? Yeah, yeah that's right uh, for this sort of thing. Yeah, with black bars over somebody's eyes, a little like glitchy TV yeah. graphic in the background. Well, I, I guess everyone's uh, least favorite conspiracy theory is is that that we can all just once again put to rest is is that nintendo killed gunpei okoi mm-hmm. which which mm-hmm. they did not do oh yeah yeah that's a very annoying one and that's that? a very annoying one i'm just throwing that out so that we can uh, once again let people know to leave yeah. that alone it's the worst one but also like the juiciest one anything else yeah. i come up with it's pretty boring it's uh you see it a lot uh still unfortunately uh, I most recently saw it about three months ago, which is too recently. Yeah, that's a surprise. Somebody saying, "Did you know that Nintendo killed the guy? The guy <laughs> who made the Game Boy?" And Did they I'm actually like, say, "Did you know?" Like it's a fact. They were telling somebody, yeah, on on Twitter, and I looked, and they're just they're 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 a younger person, but a uh, you know whatever. In in the same vein. Uh, I want to I want to do another one that, that should not be anyone's best. The, the the whole thing where people think Yuji Naka is controlling Sega from prison. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't. The, come on, that like he, he hasn't worked. People actually think that is that a no. is that a, a real thing? That would be great. <laughs> that was a good joke. <laughs> no, he's he's in prison right now with no connections to Sega. You'll see so many people claim that they see Yuji Naka walking around as a free man, but if you check the footage, he's there. <laughs> he's in jail. Yeah. <laughs> Guys in prison. <laughs> I can't believe you ruined that joke by asking, is that real? I mean, it's, <laughs> the, the problem is I, I would absolutely believe that people believe that. I would believe that they thought it. Do you believe in belief? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like um, conspiracy theories about things being, you know, tax schemes that are elaborate, but. Yeah, I, the ones that come to mind are actually probably true, like the Gizmondo. Hold on, Wonder World. <laughs> the Uva Bowl movies. Gizmondo. Yeah. That, uh, that fellow with his Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Kurt Schilling. Oh, Kurt yeah. Schilling. Number uh, 38. His, his tax shelters. So we're gonna, we'll be talking about him five episodes from now. I, I just <laughs> think that guy was an idiot. I don't think that was a conspiracy. 
That's it wasn't a conspiracy. A... He was an idiot, but also he was doing some government scams. Did anybody ever ever see the show Eastbound and Down? Uh, I know yes. we talked. <laughs> <laughs> we, I know I talked about Righteous Gemstones last week. Let's talk about Eastbound and Down. Basically, Kurt Schilling is Kenny Powers in real life, yeah. is, uh, in case that makes sense to anybody listening. That's what I assume. And for some reason, he decided to have a video game studio. I just assume that's his exact personality. This is a pretty boring one, but there's a conspiracy. It's, it's boring and obscure, so get ready for fun. Strap um, There's a conspiracy theory that, uh, that NEC deliberately made the PCFX bad so that it would fail because they knew they were using like six-year-old, five-year-old uh, hardware to make yeah. it. And and an old chipset and uh, sound chip and everything, but uh, they they didn't want to fail. Um, so there you go. <laughs> that's uh, I mean that would that's similar to Frank saying all of the things that people think were just tax uh, scams yeah. or frauds. Yeah. Uh, there are way too many video game conspiracy theories about virtually everything that are uh, they wanted this to fail. Oh, they yeah. tried. They made this bad on purpose. Right. The Sonic Mania developers getting blacklisted for being too good at their job. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, again, you know, you can't really. Uh, well. Actually, that one, <laughs> that, that seems that somewhat I'm not sure that's incorrect. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure that that's wrong. Um, there's, I think there's something to that one. It's slightly <laughs> more, I, I believe it's slightly more complicated and it's more that. Well, yeah, it's not, it's not black and white, but uh, there's shades. But I think that actually is true. Yeah. Did y'all play that, that Penny's Big Breakaway game yet? Yes. Not yet. That's a smokable right there, dude. That's a smoke. That's a big smoke. They probably went to Sega and were like. You know, I don't know anything here. And we're like, you want us to do this with Sonic? And Sega was like, no. And then no. Sega threatened to kill them for whatever reason. And it was Yuji Naka. <laughs> uh, it was Yuji Naka's yeah. directive. I guess the most tiresome conspiracy theory that keeps coming back um, is the absolutely incoherent, nebulous, spider's nest, uh, rat's web of of conspiracy theories about why Mother 3 has never been released uh, officially oh, yeah. in the United States. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's just too many things that too many people say about it. Ooh, there's a song that's got a sample from a song. It's like, okay. <laughs> oh, it's about communism and America can't handle it. <laughs> people just don't accept that they don't understand, like cost analysis and yeah like, you know. yeah yeah <laughs> there was a neat little uh interview snippet clip it that i saw on twitter yesterday usually when i see stuff on twitter in case you're wondering it's because uh, uh an, an actual friend who i talk to every day linked me to it right so there's a little interview snippet snippet clip it uh about how uh sakura taisen was released on psp in uh, 2006 in Japan, and a an unnamed uh, uh, publisher offered to localize it, and SCEA shot them down and said it's not enough of a video game. It's too much of just reading a book off a screen, and they they shot down the release of that. Now I happen to know off the top of my head because this intersects perfectly with a particular era of my own professional experience in the video game industry i know exactly who the publisher was and i can verify that that is what happened which is really fun and uh it's fun to you know be a guy who knows that sort of stuff but also in the the comments under that particular tweet i saw a lot of tweets regurgitating ps1 era conspiracy theories about how sony didn't want or how Konami threatened to not release Metal Gear Solid in the U.S. unless Sony Computer Entertainment America would let them release Castlevania Symphony of the Night, despite it not having 3D in it. So there's that's another one that I think is a little, uh, uh, it's fun to think about, but also bad. In other words, I don't like any of these conspiracy theories, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sony not wanting any 2D games on the PlayStation, threatening to shut down Symphony of the Night. Uh, that's a fun one. Mm -hmm. Our next topic, Brandon suggested that we should somehow address 333 being half the number of the beast and talking about half yeah. demons somehow. Half so demons. I'm going to broaden that a little bit and ask what hybrid characters or creatures in video games best take advantage of both halves of their nature centaurs 
Any any centaur in a shining force or a fire emblem that also has a bone arrow. Yeah. Because if you've got bone arrow, you, what do you need? You need a firm stance. Mm-hmm. I've read a lot of dime westerns, and I can tell you it is absolutely a trope to hear tell of a cowboy jumping off his horse while the horse is running full sprint, landing firmly on his feet so he can aim his gun and shoot because he couldn't take a shot while riding a horse. Because he's not the horse. Yeah. But what if he was the horse? Indeed. The horse. Right? What if his his legs were the horse? Then he would be firmly rooted. In fact, one would uh, surmise twice as firmly rooted as a mere human. Right? So. You ever, uh, when playing Shining Force, start to think, is there any real reason why I should not just have centaurs and pegasi and, and whatnot? Yeah. And, uh, and I think, I think the answer is no, you should like, they're, cause they're the mm-hmm, best. Mm-hmm, like they're just, they go the fastest. They're plenty strong. They have some, uh, some deserved terrain disadvantages though. Yeah. And c- centaurs don't gain tra- uh, terrain advantages at all if they're over. I guess that's fire emblem, but the you open, know. open fields, they, uh, they have better movement, but, uh, you know, you, you ever see a horse climb a mountain? Yeah, it ain't pretty. It's not. Silly. It's not good. It's not. It's not super. Uh, you know what? It's not exciting footage. Yeah, I, I've I've played Skyrim. I know how it goes. Oh man, have you seen the horse climb the mountain in Oblivion? Oh, like baby. Uh, it's even worse. It looks like it's just floating up the mountain. It's pretty. Yeah, it, it rules actually. Okay, so they're dual natures. Yeah. I mean, so, someone's a hybrid like vampire in some game. Well, right? Al- Al- Alucard is. Alucard. Yeah. yeah, but how much of Alucard is a human in uh, execution? Like, he might as well be a vampire or he might as well be a human. He's man shaped. Yeah. And he swings a sword and he screams, oh, when he well, dies. Yeah, I was going to say that vampires don't go, what? That's like true. That. Yeah. That, that's, that's the human part. I'm interested in this. Yes, vampires are famously not interested in this. So right. that's yeah, his not. human side. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're so old and ancient and they've lived through so many eons, eras, and epochs that they're just not interested in stuff where Alucard still has some of that human curiosity. Meanwhile, yeah. he yeah. can turn into a bat. He can yes. turn into mist and he can mm-hmm. turn into a wolf, mm-hmm. which are the three things a vampire can do. And one of the things that a werewolf can do. Oh, no, no, no. There's a fourth thing, which is dark metamorphosis. Yeah, dark <laughs> metamorphosis, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yes. God, Excellent. the night is a smoke, dude. I guess Bayonetta is just a witch. Yeah, basically. Yeah, she's yeah. just a witch. She's not half anything. But there's like, isn't there some angel business going on? Something? I forget. No, she's just a witch. All right. Fair enough. I proposed this question without having any answers for it. So uh, (laughs) you also said just kidding. And then he did it. I did also say just kidding. It's true. In in other words, you learned once again what the current generation is learning every day, which is shouldn't have tried. You just shouldn't have tried. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. right. The current generation learns that every day. They're never going to be able to buy a house. Shouldn't even try. Right. Frank made no suggestions for this episode, so he's not going to be hoisted by any particular petard. I, I guess uh I guess persona. That's a good one. You got your human and then you got your persona yeah. duality when you shoot your brain and then uh and then it comes out of there in persona. Oh sure, yeah. Two and three and whatever. Um Day people and night people. Yeah, those are those are pretty successful, I would say. Pretty good. Uh slash and bust in Samurai Showdown. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Are they hybrid? It's not it's not a hybrid at all. Prince of Persia uh two, where you've got your evil version, Dark Jack, yeah. Jack two. Yeah. The the edgy alter ego. Your new metal version. Your, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't uh doesn't Dante, doesn't Dante have something? He's got Does all he? sorts of buddies. Wait, maybe it's uh wh- which of those Kazama guys in uh in Oh Devil Jin. Yeah. Devil Jin, DJ. In in Tekken, he's got he's got a duality. Yeah, he can be your angle or your devil. Yeah, uh, so no, it's probably him. It's probably him. Probably goodbye. Him. Goodbye. Next question. <laughs> uh, Frank didn't have any suggestions, so we're going to play the adaptation game. This uh-huh. is a thing where we try to imagine a property that is not a video game as the perfect video game version of itself. This week we're doing the Three Musketeers. Oh, I mean, you could do that. Well, like one of them's really tall, right? One of them is really small. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other one has projectiles. Is that, I, I haven't read it in a while. 
Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've heard the phrase, I haven't read it in a while, about the book, The Three Musketeers, so many times in my life that I've I've got this, I have to ask, are you sure you've actually read it? I am sure that I have never read it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, that's yeah. always the answer. Okay, that's that's good. I have uh, seen just, Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, just making sure. Uh, because it's not it's not about three musketeers, it's about a guy. Okay. Yeah. And then there's three musketeers in it. D'Artagnan is your it's main about the tall character. guy and the short guy and the projectile guy. I know this one. <laughs> That's the Lost Vikings. No, there's a fourth guy. Okay, I have a I have a, a proposal here, which is that we Kingdom Hearts it and we yeah. get No, it's Final Fantasy fifteen, which has four people. Come we on. Get a, there's a guy and then three guys. But I wanted to do the the three caballeros and the three amigos and the, and they all have to mm. like universe themselves. They have is to, it the Donald Duck? Caballeros? Yes, exactly. They have to universe okay. themselves. Yeah. They have to universe themselves. I have heard so many people mention Kingdom Hearts in the past couple of decades that I just have to ask, Brandon, have you actually played all the way through any Kingdom Hearts game? No, I don't like them. <laughs> there, okay. Well, you don't like them. Why don't you like them? Well, there's a few reasons. One is that I had never finished one. <laughs> I don't I yeah. don't understand what they're talking about ever. That's one thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, an- another thing it's is not really that difficult to understand. Combat's yeah. too yeah. slippy for me. He read this review on actionbutton.net that really turned him off. <laughs> That's right. It made hey, hey, no slippy. It's pretty good. You just gotta <laughs> learn uh you gotta learn when to toggle your your soft and soft lock on and off. Uh that's all. I mean, I don't know. We can talk about this the other, later. The other thing is, I got a bit of get got a bit of the Disney allergy. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. which the is best hard part to... about Kingdom Hearts is when you get to the part where they don't even care about Disney stuff anymore, and it's just like, what's going, dude? The combat is really tasty in those games. I like. I it. do like the key sword, though. I think that's pretty cool. Keyblade, yeah, yeah. that's neat. How it makes a big like dinky sound, like you're hitting a baby with a toy. Uh, Did anybody plush else plush hammer? When they uh, when they when they saw that key sword, be, be like, "Wow, they uh, they're bringing back the special from from Rondo of Blood." That that was my <laughs> first thought, and obviously, it doesn't make any sense. But in in Rondo of Blood, there's a there's a special where there's a key, and you just put it out there, and then he may, has a question mark over his head because he doesn't know what not to do a door with the key, to unlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, that's right. Uh, that's the very first level of Rondo of Blood. I've heard so many people mention specific details of the very first level of Rondo of Blood that I just have to ask. Brandon, have you? I'm have you, joking with you. I'm yeah, joking. I've, no, I've, 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 uh, I've played through that. Okay, but come on, for, for serious. Come on, come on. Like, yeah, all for love by uh, Brian Adams has to be sure. That's the theme song. Yeah, the theme song from the movie. Yeah, well, Three it's Mysterious, 17th yeah. century France. The movie starring Oliver Platt. Yeah, from FX's The Bear. How surprised were you to see him in FX's The Bear? I was very surprised watching Hulu. When he showed up, I don't know what either of these things are. I don't know who this person is. I don't know what this show is. He was is. in the Three Musketeers Disney movie, the one with Donald Duck. The bear has been mentioned on this show many times. It's a it takes place in Chicago, in theory. Yeah, you should. Uh, you might want to watch it, Frank. You might enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about stressful food service. <laughs> short short episodes and uh, only a few of them. Short episodes and only a few it's, of them. It's pretty intense. It's practically a web series. It's not a web series. It's it's a real thing. Don't worry. Well, if it's a Hulu series, wouldn't that make it a web series? No, it's an FX series. It's an FX series, yeah. Ah, that is on the cable. All right. Hulu just has exclusive uh, streaming rights to FX stuff because what? Because they're owned by the same people who own the same people who own somebody yeah, else. Yeah, they got the same Disney. grandpa. Yeah. Jeffy, yeah. do you think Hulu is still just, you go to Hulu.com and watch ALF on your web browser? <laughs> Yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah, if you'd like. Or you load up the Hulu app on your phone and you watch it in bed as you fall asleep. Watch yesterday's episode of your favorite ABC sitcoms, yeah. but only until tomorrow. Exactly. That's the Hulu promise. It's the Hulu guarantee. How else do you watch Abbott Elementary? I watched through the entirety of Arrested Development on Hulu.com and it was... I swear, the same one commercial for the same hotel for the in- oh, every man. commercial break for the entire run of Arrested Development. That was God, nice. yeah, that rules. If there was ever a an ad free version of anything, uh, then I have not seen ads on that platform. Oh no, the, I'm I'm talking the old days when one might watch Arrested Development. Let's place this into context here, which is that you went to a website, oh, Hulu.com, right. on your computer. That was the way you watch things. The only way. 
So I guess the answer to this question is only Tim has read The Three Musketeers. It's Final Fantasy 15, except it's in France and uh, you got your three bros and then you got your one guy who's the special boy. Yeah. Except uh, D'Artagnan is, I should point out, a very, very defamiliarized special boy. The, the, the special boy character that we all know of uh, in genre fiction is an incredibly watered down and diluted version of D'Artagnan, who's an, a bit of an idiot, a bit of a psycho, a, a bit of a jerk, uh, a bit of a rich boy. He's a special boy who learns things and grows and changes uh, because of these All cool right. three musketeers. Now we get a hi- horse carriage instead of the car? Well, you have horses, you have a carriage, yeah. You uh, travel around on foot. It's Assassin's Creed. It's Final Fantasy XV. Like uh, we need $200 million. Please. We'll be right back while we gather funding from our first round investors. Here are some things that I see in the video feeds of everybody's recording setup while everyone's away. In Tim's apartment, I see a guitar, a complicated water dish for Tim's dog. In Frank's window, I see a framed Maniac Mansion post. In Brandon's, I see a little plant by the windowsill. Uh, I think that's mint. And this has been this week's edition of What Alex Sees in Everyone's Windows. Welcome back to Insert Credit. It's time for the second of our three segments of episode 333. We're taking a triple dip into Carl's Bad Cavern. I've selected three questions from patreon.com slash insert credit where patrons for mere dollars a month can submit their own questions through a form specially provided to them, get monthly bonus episodes, and other guiding episodes on occasion one week early. One week early? Was I supposed to say One that? week early! <laughs> okay. Our first question is from Blunt Force Mama, who asks, do you have to play a game to like it? No. Absolutely I don't think so. Not. No. No. It's called, it's called, I've talked about this extensively in the past, it's called the good time hat. Uh, yeah. You can like anything you decide to like. If you mm-hmm. decide ahead of time that you like it, you can like it. And that's not weird. It's not deviant behavior. It's not wrong. You can still criticize something that you decided to like. Uh, you can, I mean, oh, most of the time, I, I, I make this uh, uh, one of my personal missions to to mention this as much as I can. The good time hat, I call it. Put your good time hat on. I mention this because most of the time, you see the exact opposite behavior amongst gamers. They put the bad time hat on, mm-hmm. right? If you if you put the good time hat on instead, it's fine. You can just like it without even playing it. You can be wearing your good time hat years before you play a thing. It's fine. So I, I have some big news for um <clears throat> for uh, it's Carl submitted the question mm-hmm. from his yeah. cavern. Yeah, right? big Carl. Um, well, sometimes it's Charles. This time it's Carl. It's Carl. Okay. There's this whole thing online where young people. Uh, get really, really into video games by watching other people play them and they don't bother that. playing them themselves. And um, they also don't feel like they have to I believe that they like the games that they're watching. I mm-hmm. believe that would be their opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Checks out, Carl. Yeah. So the answer is yes. And they don't feel like ever playing the games. And they're also not wrong that about right. liking them. <laughs> It's interesting. They're, and they're not wrong about uh, not wanting to play them. This next one is from Spencer Gipps, who asks, where are we in video game history parallel to the history of other mediums? Along film history, for example, are we past the French New Wave? Or what was the E.T. the movie of video games? Well, I don't think it's parallel. So uh, I agree. that's the main thing is yeah. that they, we wouldn't we wouldn't uh, call them analogous. But uh We've had a whole bunch of things happen, so that's good. <laughs> it's been a bunch of. <laughs> I, I think we're uh, we're at a point where they they've kind of they've intersected and they've kind of uh, it, it's looking like a lie detector test at this point more than anything else. Uh, where you got the two lines just intersecting in these fuzzy, uh, inscrutable areas. I mean, I'm watching TV shows, and a lot of the times shots are staged like a video game cutscene, mm-hmm. and. I remember when Roger Ebert used to always, his biggest insult was to say that a movie was, a particular film was like watching someone play a video game. First of Mm -hmm. all, he was always wrong. He was always wrong because number one, he didn't know what a video game was. 
really. He he didn't he basically didn't know at the point he said that he didn't know. He might have played a, a game that people love to mention the name of the game that he played and liked a long time ago. He might have played a game uh, a long time ago, but at that time he didn't know. However, if he were alive today and he did know what video games looked like, he would say the same thing about most stuff on Netflix and he would be right. He would be 100% right. I watched the whole Guy Ritchie uh, created by Guy Ritchie TV series, The Gentleman on Netflix. That whole god darn thing looked like a video game cutscene. Like the whole thing. I watched some of that Shogun on FX. It looks exactly like a video game cutscene. Like it is crazy. And I feel like like it's not accidental. So there's that. No, I, it, it is. It is not. I would say that we have reached the point where I have a number of film pals and they have, I have been contacted by three of them asking if I know someone who is uh, good at rigging and uh, like, but they mean in the camera sense, good at yeah. camera movements and uh and fr- framing and staging in unreal engine 5 because they want to use that for camera control and yeah. uh in in digital scenes they want to use it for uh staging stuff it's it's pretty interesting well tell them i am but i'm busy so okay i'll let so them know <laughs> let them know let them know you know a guy but he's busy yeah. um, <laughs> very helpful <laughs> so I, I don't think it's possible to draw a parallel because I think all entertainment is different now. Like yeah. the way that we find it, the way that we consume it is extremely different than the days where everyone uh, experienced the same stuff at the same time. Yeah, we're, we're far gone from people freaking out when a train is coming through the tunnel in a in, in a, a, a tent and had a circus carnival, right? We're, oh, we're that's past three that. points to Tim Rogers. I had the train in a tunnel train in analogy tunnel. in my notes here. Perfect. Wait, usually that would be a subtraction. That should be a subtraction. Yeah, not this time. No, this is a stuff he oh. wants somebody this to mention. This is a mention. celebration. <laughs> All right, Jeff. That, that was in the 70s. This ex- extremely, <laughs> extremely selective points giving here. Uh, so okay. we're, we're well past <laughs> that era of not just video games, but of entertainment. And here's the, th- the the aspect of this particular conversation, which I've seen recur dozens of times in the last 20 years that I've spent as a professional in the video game industry, which is scary to think about. 20 years, baby. I've seen this conversation, where's video games with regard to WRT movies? Here's the thing. Movies didn't really have a video games, right? They, there, were, there were plays, there were operas, there were ballets. There were symphony orchestra performances, right? There were, uh, right? There were all of these things. But when video games came out, there was movies, right? Yeah. So it's kind of stupid to even try to have this conversation. Right. Video games and movies evolved together. Yeah, movies didn't exist when movies were evolving. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the fact that movies not only have existed for the duration of video games, and when I say duration of video games, I mean the first video games that had. I don't know how where we draw the line. The first video games that had humanoid characters in them, right? We're not counting Space War or Pong. Frank, what's the first video game with a human? Oh shoot, good question. <laughs> I can tell you the first is a human girl. I know you can. I don't know, human boy. Just a human in general. But uh, yeah, so it's a. Uh, ever since we had video game characters that had people in them, there's there've just been movies. And there have been movies that are making millions of dollars. And there have been movies that are changing pop culture. Movies that have been creating culture, for better or for worse. That's what Star Wars did. It created some culture. Whatever that means. Uh, you know, that's just been happening this whole time. Movies haven't... Movies aren't finished. The The art form of the film isn't finished. And uh, uh, they're just... Uh, kind of reflecting off of each other and they always have been video games and movies so i don't i don't see it possible to pinpoint any point in a trajectory here's a question i do not understand but maybe you will uh this is from krumar bones who asks what are some games which look better through composite input rather than component or s video you don't understand that i can explain that yeah there's Please plenty do. um yeah so i i don't want to get into the weeds about what's happening but uh composite is the red yellow white cables right mm-hmm. um well composite actually is just the yellow cable it's just one cable and and 
um, component would be the much later like red, green, blue cables on, uh. on like the flat screens here. Basically, a composite signal is combining all of the color channels into one pipe, and what you get uh, is a lot messier and and blurrier than what you would get from composite or even S video, which uh, separates what is it Y and C something in chroma. I don't know light yeah. and. Uh, composite video is is noisier and the the colors tend to blur together on the horizontal axis and uh, what is the question exactly what games look better that way the ones where the artists tuned it for composite i mean that that is the answer and i think we've basically answered this question on this show uh accidentally several times before yeah Um, Uh now i'm hearing it yeah there is uh, as you all know this is this is my stuff right um Mm -hmm. there there is no universal answer Um, There is a universal answer possibly for, you know, what does your nostalgia tell you video games look like, right? But there is no answer for what is an NES game supposed to look like? Because to me, I I respect like artist intent, like what was the artist seeing? And uh, there's no universal like development kit for something like an NES. Um, So some people were just straight up like making pixels in deluxe paint over you know, really nice monitor set up and not even thinking about composite. Um, Kev Bayless from Rare drew on graph paper, but but like squinted at his eyes to make it blurry, you know, because like that, that that's what he was tuning for. So some pixel art uh, was tuned specifically for composite. Some wasn't. Um, but what do we feel like as a group looks best when the pixels blur together? My answer that I think I will be now giving for the third time is Warlock. On the Sega Genesis, <laughs> yeah. the title screen mm-hmm. has red vertical lines on the L- Warlock logo. When viewed through composite, they blur together to make it appear completely transparent. It yep. truly looks like transparency, uh, which the Genesis cannot do because red especially blurs across the horizontal. And that was 100% intentional. So uh, that is one that looks better on composite for sure. Yeah. I'm going to pretend it was 100% intentional for this to be the third time you answer that question. <laughs> oh, three. I like it. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? The, the famous one is the waterfall in Sonic. Yeah. Um, yeah the ring. The, the uh, spotlights in Streets of Rage 3, I think, are very, like anything dithered, right? Yep. Where it's like a mm-hmm. checkerboard pattern. Um, There's a lot of Genesis becomes stuff. Becomes transparent. And, and it's mostly on the Genesis. The Lion King looks like trash, uh, unless it's in composite, um, where it's still you plays You heard like it trash. here first. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. The Lion King looks like trash. I want to watch the CG movie uh, over composite. Maybe it'll look interesting. And uh, yeah. I'll throw the Saturn in there. A lot of lot of, a lot of mm-hmm, dithered mm-hmm. transparencies, and coupled with real transparencies, and they it looks a lot better when you got the both of them over composite. Um, but a lot of Saturn games look fantastic on components, so I have to say that one is dealer's choice. I don't even know when people started doing not composite as what they were tuning for. I got to think like 360. I think, yeah. Well, hmm. I think there was a little PS2 time. I mean, we all knew about like S video and stuff exists. Well, maybe, but I think PS2 because because there was such like a resolution race because everyone knew the PC was better at that point. Like, we weren't chasing arcades anymore. We were now chasing PC. Right, but normal people only knew about the yellow plug, you know, and that's what came with the system. It's true, but starting with the PS2 is when official component cables started getting sold. Right, but that was for, you know, the the higher-end consumer. Um, Yeah, but that... but. To me, it, when when official cables are getting sold that are component, that okay, means that- Okay, S-Video on Super Nintendo. Like, you could buy that. You could buy RGB cable officially on Super Nintendo. We're talking about component, so... I'm pretty sure well, they component were... Component is the same as RGB. It's just a different color space, but it's the same cleanliness to it. Making the argument the... the Sorry, you, you said S-Video earlier, but... Uh, well, as, yeah, I, I, and then I said also RGB, for that matter. RGB was something you could buy for the Super Famicom. But the games okay. weren't specifically yeah. tuned exactly. for it. Yeah, yeah. Right, what? like like that was an option for those who wanted it, much like the PS2, but I don't think that most, you know, like in the same way that like audio techs for the longest time and maybe still target crappy car stereos for, for how they're they're tuning things. I, I believe that it was composite until the 360. I do all my audio editing on my lap or my on my computer monitor speakers uh, for that reason, just by having yeah. these seven hundred dollar uh-huh. headphones. I do have to remind my uh my audio folks sometimes. Did you listen to this on crappy speakers? Just want to make sure. 
Yeah. The answer is usually no. <laughs> All right. That brings us to our final segment of 333. Uh, we're going to close out with dithered lightning rounds. Uh, for this, we're going to be switching between three lightning rounds at once, an exhibition violence island of three person matches, a game FAQ and A's for Kingdom Hearts 3, and a name design for the last movie in a film trilogy. We will start with Agent 47 versus the Chief Inspector of the East India Company from Return of the Obra Dinn versus Phoenix Wright. 47. A three-way, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Phoenix Wright's dead. Phoenix Wright's an idiot. Uh, yeah. He's a lawyer. Oh, uh, He's a blood-sucking lawyer, which doesn't technically make him a vampire. Age, like, Agent 47 could probably defeat any of these people. I think yeah. that's pretty... Yeah, he throw yeah. a hot dog at them. Is how it, yeah. that's, that's the answer. He throws he throws a single hot dog that kills yeah, it hits both, both of them. them. Yeah, <laughs> one hot dog yeah, kills in, them in one throw. In a single yeah. throw. Yeah. Yeah. Kill, yeah, it's a boomerang of a hot dog, and then he catches it in his teeth. Yeah. Next, is Luxord from Quadratum? No, absolutely not. Come on, yeah, yeah. Is this troll? Is a troll? <laughs> That's it's pretty basic. <laughs> Have uh, you yeah. been sniffing glue? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh. What are we doing with that? Making a game? Name, Name design. Oh. Yeah. It's the uh, Lost Vikings. <laughs> it's the Three Musketeers. <laughs> yeah, it's Three Musketeers game that we were trying to work on earlier. The ugly uh, has a projectile because he yeah. can't get he can't get near anybody. Right. Uh, the bad is uh, like huge and muscular. Also, his projectile is his teeth. I want I want to point out. Yeah. He, he, he spits his teeth. Yeah. yeah. Really, really hard. Yeah. And he yeah. says, Patooey. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and every time you pick up an item, you get the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, the music. Ooh, ooh, every, ooh. every single time you pick up an item until they're just yeah. overlapping. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and and each stage ends when you shoot the rope. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Exactly. exactly. That's There's a guy the being stage. hanged in, at the end of mm. every stage. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. the timer is yeah. to solve the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you see the rope getting more and more straight in the corner of the scene. The more you die. oh, that's really good. And and every once in a while, there are enemies that can that are are bad and must be defeated by goodness. There are enemies that are good and must be defeated mm -hmm. by badness. And there are enemies that are beautiful and must be defeated by ugliness. <laughs> by yeah. Ugliness. So it's got a. Oh, little, it's not a rock get... paper scissors thing where bad defeats good and ugly defeats bad and. No, ugly is just a different. It's, it's like a. Separate... No, the designers are not smart enough uh, right. to understand <laughs> rock paper scissors. They just yeah. they they create. Uh, a, a, uh, specifically disparate uh, conditions yeah. uh, to the primary uh, traits of the main characters. <laughs> well, so no, no, no. They're they're also they're missing D'Artagnan, and they have to rescue yeah. him. He's beautiful. Yeah, that's he's true. the it's beautiful. The one. good, the bad, the ugly, and yeah. D'Artagnan. <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly, the bold, and the beautiful. <laughs> uh, you won from Guitaru Man versus I know from Guilty Gear versus Umjammer Lammy. Uh, Eno oh. is the only actual fighter, so she's gonna win. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So that's yep. that's the answer there. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be a slash for me, dog. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Who is the master of masters? God. Yeah. Or <laughs> if you uh, uh, possess a slightly different mindset, uh, uh, they sometimes call him the Lord of Lies, uh -oh. um, the master of monsters. Yeah. The best of the beasts, big old man Satan. You want to check that? I was going to say uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh yeah. Well, okay. Have you? I mean, there's, there's, you know, the title of the master is. Uh, you know, but I guess the, the master, master of masters of would be who directed him, Paul Thomas Anderson. Right. I, mean, I suppose so. I mean, is he the master though? Yeah, I don't know. Which one of them is the master? Maybe it all goes back to God. Uh, <laughs> Give it up for Big G. Like, you know, can I just say, it upsets me that uh, they've changed the name of the film The Bicycle Thief to The Bicycle Thieves. Yeah. Did that happen? Yeah. So the Italian title is Bicycle Thieves. Um, it is yeah. plural. Ladri is, is plural for thieves. Yeah. For the longest time, the English title was The Bicycle Thief, mm -hmm. and they changed it to Bicycle Thieves. And... Okay. Uh, that makes me sad. That sounds like the sequel. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It yeah, sounds I mean, like, just leave uh, it. Yeah, it sounds like they're cashing in on twisters. Live with your mistakes. I actually think yeah. the English title, the original English title, was better yeah. than the original Italian title. Yeah, I like it. Have, have we all seen The Bicycle Thief here? Mm -hmm. I have, yes. 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I, I well, think, it's been a long time. <laughs> since I think, think I did in college. I don't remember. <laughs> Watch it again if you if you ever feel like watching a perfect movie that is both important art and also and Italian. Just, and very Italian, <laughs> and also is just very entertaining and easy to put on and watch. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. It's Frank, a- I got. I, if you have something that can play a disc, I have a I disc don't. you can use. Okay, <laughs> you you nobody not. has that. It's practically a Studio Ghibli movie. If uh, that yeah. gets anybody in the audience, going. it's probably on the Criterion Channel. It is on the Criterion Channel. I would yeah. assume. Oh, okay. Where it is called Bicycle Thieves, says it was Criterion who themselves. Uh, well, I don't acknowledge this version. The name change. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Keep in mind in the rules of name design is that the things that are in the title do not exist. So you're treating it separately from everything else. Okay. Spider-Man, no way home. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Spider-Man's trapped on the God darn subway. Okay. Yeah. But Spider-Man doesn't exist, right? <laughs> yeah. In our, in our scenario, we cannot use Marvel yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah. Can't use Marvel yeah. Spider-Man. Okay. That, that makes sense. He's just a yeah. guy with a big spider tattoo on the top of his dome. He's like, he's yeah. like a, uh, he's a, he's a tough guy gang banger He's played by vin diesel gentleman. who does exist played by, yeah played by <laughs> vincent diesel uh with a big spider tattoo on the back of his head and he can't get home because he's stuck on the subway he doesn't have a way to get so there. is it a puzzle game about making the right connections or or is it maybe it's like a raw danger style yeah uh, there we whatever go. that is right yeah like, where you just keep having to solve social situations and mm-hmm. things like that yeah it's it's um it's that san andreas movie that he was in which I think had an Grand Theft Auto movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vin Diesel yeah, in yeah, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Yeah. It yeah. works. Dwayne The Rock Johnson uh, was in the San Andreas movie. That's yeah. right. <laughs> God uh, darn it. Man, I can't guy. believe that in 2024, I made the Vin Diesel versus The Rock yeah. mistake, which which was joked about in like 2005. Did y'all see that God darn The Rock is coming back to the Fast and Furious movies after saying he never would because his career kind of sucks now because everybody knows he's a phony? Uh, no, it's kind of cool. See that. He black Adamed himself. Yeah. The hierarchy of power changed. All right, next is VV, VV, V, 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 V. Um, who are the first two from? Uh, first is from Final Fantasy IX. Second is from Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. All right. Can V, 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 whatever die? Actually, I think the moment V, 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 V makes contact with any dangerous thing, it dies. The, but yeah. they instant re- instantly respawn. I think upon death, you're eliminated from Violence Island. Even if they respawn, it's like, no, you're done. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you don't. Mario doesn't get 30 lives if he's on Mar- if he's on Violence Island. Yeah, but but this V has the infinite and is basically immortal, right? Well, uh, yeah, but if we make that argument, then we'd have to say that like every time. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have no, to it's, kill. It's and fair. like Celeste right. is also unkillable. So then V is, is that <laughs> I know her name's not Celeste. Yeah. Mm. So so that one's not going to make it. Yeah. And a single bounce. That's over. We got cy- Cyberpunk versus Final Fantasy IX. Yeah. Is is the Final Fantasy IX one the little munchkin shadow guy? Yeah, yeah he's a little black okay. mage. He uh, he knows magic. He knows magic. Cyberpunk knows cyberpunk. Yeah, cyberpunk can hack people or shoot people or, or slash people with the sword. Ooh, classic technology versus magic here. Okay. Yeah. Vivi is, spoilers, Vivi is a robot. Yeah. Uh, uh, spoilers. Oh, then he's spoiler. screwed. Yeah, yeah Vivi's a robot. Uh, then I don't see how Vivi makes it out of this. Well, is he connected to any sort of a network, though, is the question. That's a good question. I don't think he is. Well, it's an island, so I think no. So I think we got our our, our little mage gremlin. Is yeah, I, the think, I think Vivi's going to win, even though yeah. it, his battle animations are incredulously too slow to a point where it makes the game virtually uh, disgusting to revisit uh, <laughs> on occasion when you're just trying to hang out with it because it looks good. I get tired of waiting for things in that I, I have to say in older games that is my number one thing. It's like come yeah. on guys, I'm tired of waiting for this. Start embracing the emulator and you got a fast forward button. Mm. Yeah. Isn't Sora technically a Final Fantasy character? Technically, yeah. Yeah. Sure. This is the answer. I mean, I'd say everyone's saying uh, there's not enough Final Fantasy stuff in Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, I don't know. The Kingdom Hearts stuff is Final Fantasy stuff, man. Yeah. Is what I say to those people. So Sora beat Sephiroth twice and everything. How much more Final Fantasy can you get? Exactly. That's uh, slightly better than Cloud. Yeah. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. 
Mm, okay, so this is about uh, a jeweler. Yeah, for sure. Sure. Right? Like this is mm-hmm. this is like the the jewelry tycoon of mm-hmm. of this town. And so it's Lord of the Rings. Uh, what was the subtitle? Return, Return, of, the King. Return of the King. Return so the King is coming back, and you have to prepare. Uh, okay, I, I I think that the Lord of the Rings is getting roped into a conspiracy to assassinate the king by giving him a, a, a very interesting, uh, enticing ring that the king will want to have, which will poison the king. And, yeah, the uh, poison the, ring. Yeah. Yeah, poison yeah. ring. This is a very short story. Poison but, ring uh, for a poison king. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just a, a stupid name for like a bad sleeping dogs kind of thing where the the rings are like some triads or whatever mm. in Hong yeah. Kong. And it's just a bad open world PS2 game. Mm-hmm. What if it's the Lord of the Three Ring Circus? Yeah, that's even better. P.T. Oh, Barnum, Barnum? Barnum and Bailey's uh, yeah. the Lord of the Rings, the Return of the King. <laughs> <laughs> and the King is the name of an elephant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so an elephant who was uh, out on sabbatical and is now yeah. back. Yeah. He's back. With, he comes back. He comes back with like a, a, a hat and like a briefcase yeah. in his mouth. Even more yeah. trunk related tricks. Uh, He's learned uh, on the road. Oh, and and he comes back with the you know how how the elephants they like grab the tail of their of their parent with their trunk. Yeah. So right. he's, he's he's trailing two little elephants as he comes back mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. The princes. Yeah. Yeah. The two princes. Yeah, the king yeah. is back. And finally, our Violence Island three-way final: Agent Forty Seven versus Eno versus Vivi. That's a pretty. That's a pretty big bowl of who cares. To be <laughs> yeah. perfectly honest, it always is. Uh, Agent 47's got another. He still has the same hot dog. He only yeah. half of it. <laughs> he caught it. It boomeranged. Yeah. It's still he in his teeth. He didn't eat it yet. Yeah. And you know that guy's got no god darn soul. You know, right. Hit- Hitman and Vivi are, uh, they're they are like more, uh, they're more similar than you'd think. Agent huh. 47 and Vivi are pretty, uh, they're pretty, they're, I think they would, they would chill if, if it, they weren't uh, fighting to the death. Yeah. I think they'd hang out. Well, unfortunately, Agent 47 got him. Are we all on board with Agent 47? Who's our third person? Uh, It's Eno. Eno, She's a uh, rock and roll witch from... Oh, she's the one who was just like the only fighter in that scenario. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's 47. Come on. 47. All right, that's our episode. They wouldn't even know he was a participant. He would just be like, hey, guys, I'm the ref. I'm here to make sure the fight is clean. Please drink this water. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to add Agent 47 with a floppy hot dog to our uh, Tournament of Champions here. All right. Okay. Well, no, we've, we've established he's down to half. Yes. Half a, hot, half dog. a hot dog. Half a hot dog. Yeah. I'm going to say with a bun. It's a foot long, by the way. So okay. it's still six inches of dog. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is all of my notes. Very good. Does anyone have any recommendations? Yeah, I got a couple. I, I recommend a song called Messengers of Love by the band Carmody, C-A-R-M-O-D-Y. Uh-huh. Uh, it's an Italian new wave. Uh, you can find it on Mannequin Records. It's also it's on Bandcamp. It's just kind of neat. It, it would have been their one hit if they could have been a one-hit wonder. I think it would have been. It's uh, It's got a good guitar tone. Um, I also recommend log back into the forums because we had to move them to... Uh, we, we changed it over to Discourse from Flarem because... Uh, Flarem, despite us being one of their larger uh, installs, did not seem to um, be particularly troubled by the the technical issues that we were having many of. So now we're on Discourse. So log back in. If you can't figure it out, send a message to show at insertcredit.com because um, the message to reset your password never came for me. And then I just wanted to uh, bring up a little thing that I had been thinking about. You know how how people have been like changing their region on Steam to Argentina so that they can buy games for super cheap and stuff, and that's mm-hmm. been like an issue people have been trying to take care of. Uh, it also how um, in order to watch a, a a TV show, often what people do these days is like make a new email address and use a VPN and get a new seven day trial to to have whatever service for seven days and then disable it and stuff especially with the argentina thing i've been thinking about how difficult that was to do and how annoying it would be but then i thought about how people that are say in high school right now never lived with an internet that worked well they Mm -hmm. like they didn't experience a time when you could just look at a website like now you have to look at a website and click away seven things and and decline some stuff and do whatever to just get to what's there 
And I was just thinking that, like, in a world where all of the internet is so bad and difficult to use and troublesome, like, j- changing your region to Argentina to buy a game for cheap kind of is just the same thing. It's not, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not more difficult than mm-hmm, using mm-hmm. the rest of the internet, particularly. So that was just something I was thinking about. I wonder if uh, y'all have thought about that already in the past, but it is kind of like a, you know, the, the, the experiment of the internet continues to go further off the rails and, and become less useful and more difficult. And, uh, and I just wonder what it's going to be like for people who, like my partner works with a lot of younger people and they just don't really use social media or the internet very much except for for work and they spend like more time outside <laughs> and things because yeah. it's just not because it's just not that very good the young people you see on social media are like provably some of the worst people in the world too right. which is interesting so yeah keep in mind if you're looking at social media and you see a young person with a bad idea they are sort of possibly a, a minority yeah, uh, they're among not their, their age demographic. And I do, but at the same time, I also, the young people I see on the internet, some of them are like way better. Some of them are cool as heck. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, it's just an interesting, it was just an interesting thing for me to think that the internet has gotten bad enough that that stuff that I thought was like, why would anyone do this? Is, is like not really that far of a stretch from what any of us would do to try to, try to, like, I want to look up some F1 rankings. And, uh, you know, I got to navigate these bizarre websites and click all these things away and stop a video from playing. And it takes me it takes me like a minute to get the information that I want. Yeah. But at least your connection's a lot faster <laughs> <That's> <laughs> than, right. than it would have been 25 years ago. That's right. At least you got better than 56K. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think about the latter part of what you said a lot, but not yeah. specifically the like work around Steam stuff it's I, I think of it more in terms of well I, mean, I think of it in terms of my job and and how much we are dependent on the internet as it was invented yeah to keep like roms alive mm-hmm. um and how i don't trust that um yeah. and uh-huh. you know when we're doing things like conducting a study to show how many games are out of print so that libraries can have more options to offer games and and people scream at me about how they, they these games do exist you can find them i have them and and it's just like it's really frustrating to me to be like okay think bigger you know <laughs> like do you actually believe like you can't google you know, for ROMs anymore. We're just kind of reliant on the Internet Archive continuing to host everything. Is that going to continue to be true forever? That is our one point of success and failure. So I think of the death of the Internet in those terms, like we're we're going to start losing information because we because we're so reliant on very weird, specific things continuing to exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's only a few things left that consistently work and like you have to yeah you have to understand the arcane magics in order to make search work because you got to type the right things in there and you got to like at this point you just have to type well, that's getting reddit worse. into your search yep and and then determine and Reddit's not going to be around in like five years the way we know it like there's no way oh, yeah. and also you have to determine whether that answer from that reddit user is is like is, is that a real person as well right. like do they have a real answer in there uh it's it's uh and have you seen that google has started summarizing reddit answers yeah. for you like just pulling the answer have you seen when you click on a link to wikipedia from uh from google it mu- it might take you to a version of the page that has been highlighted by ai by google that has like red highlights over the the relevant stuff. If you want to just get the info fast oh, all the time, and getting the highlight off the screen is a, a dubious process. So. I hadn't seen that. I haven't encountered I, that. I and, and more often than not, I must admit that the highlighted information is what I was looking for, and it's fine. But like, I'm, oh, it's it's like seventy thirty for me. That uh, seventy incorrect, thirty correct. I just oh, don't. Okay. I just don't like the assumption that I can't just read the whole thing in one minute. Uh, Indeed, which is usually you know, which you know, can I I'll find out next time, right? But uh, you know, I, maybe, maybe I could read the whole page if I wanted to. Maybe right? Maybe I don't need the summary. God darn it! So I recommend that uh, the people in charge of the internet just do a better job. <laughs> <laughs>
Just kidding. Just... If you're listening, and I know you are, <laughs> please Let's do a better that job, up. please. Thanks. Thanks. Frank, what have you got? Uh, play some ROMs. <laughs> Upload some ROMs somewhere. Figure it out. I don't know. I don't, I'm, Figure it um, out. Watching that X Men cartoon is fine, but uh, I feel like I should talk about that with people who actually understand the source material really well, like I do, because my my uh, I watched it when I was a kid. Criticisms are uh, no, no, no. Like the the comics that they are adapting. Ooh, uh, for I example, don't for I, I, I will I, I will say it, and and I said this somewhere else. Like I find it extremely interesting that every piece of media that adapts X Men is still just like mining from this one guy's run of the comic and that yeah. continues to be true and that's really fascinating because that is uh, interesting he stopped writing it in 1991 and that's just when the ideas i guess that are adaptable stopped um and it's it's fascinating to me that- i had an amusing moment with that thing where i watched the trailer of it and i thought i'd probably watch this and then one of the uh like the top comment was i am 43 years old and this brings me right back to my childhood. I'm like, yeah, you're 43 years old. That's who this is for. <laughs> right. Yeah, but yeah. This is a show for 43 year olds, man. Yeah. Like, I don't think t- there's any like 12 it's year olds. It's called X Men 97 because you're <laughs> halfway to that age. Yeah. Yeah. It's for people who are 40, uh, 48 and a half years old. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, there's some interesting stuff there, though. I, I, like, if it's if it's interesting to you theoretically, I think it's worth looking at. I think some of the animation decisions, for example, are really believe it or not. I'm going to watch it despite my it. my my that. my anti uh, Marvel things stance. I'm going to watch it because I'm 43 years old almost. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and that's exactly the thing that you watched, and now there's more. Exactly, and and it's like a. That lady who voices Storm is still there just doing her thing. To quote uh, I love it. Arnold Schwarzenegger constantly through the, the, the director's commentary and actor's commentary of uh, Conan the Barbarian. I remember this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've seen I, that. Oh, I considered so watching that X-Men thing. I watched, I actually rewatched some of the old X-Men show on Disney Plus when they added it on there a couple of years back. Uh, and I was having a good time. I watched the first couple episodes and I was having a good time. It's a good time show. I watched that show when I was a kid. It was revolutionary. It was like an anime. Yeah. Because it had a con- yeah. it had continuity. Had continuity. Mm-hmm. Had characters that uh, that learned things and changed a little. I was, I think I've mentioned this before, I was one of those people who uh, rejected childish stuff at like age five. I, I didn't like cartoons. I didn't watch Sesame Street. Didn't like movies with kids in them, right? You know, that was a common type of Gen X person, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that X-Men show, I was like, oh, this is good. This is the good stuff. Yeah. I was on the cover of Cigar Aficionado magazine, (laughs) re that show. Uh, I was was like, this is sophisticated. This is a show for adults, which I I think is how a lot of Batman the Animated Series fans also Mm -hmm. probably felt, right? It was around the same time. And that was why we felt betrayed when they started trying to shoehorn Robin into it. Like, no, I, an 11-year-old, am an adult, and I don't want to see children in this show. Remove the boy immediately. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right? Is, is there yeah. some kind of poll I can participate in? <laughs> so I've, I've considered watching this X-Men show. This may interest anyone watching. Uh, I see it as part of my duty to uh, just kind of be aware of the culture out there as it happens. I read all the young adult books, you know, that are about to be adapted into. I read those Maze Runner books. Uh, I read Twilight. I I read them all, right? I watch all those Marvel movies, and I haven't liked a single scene in any one of them for a long while now. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But I'm going to watch this X-Men cartoony probably late at night while just blasted off my mind with dozens of hours of sleeplessness as I continue toiling away on my myriad projects. You ever get tired of toiling? No, what? Uh, I do. I think. I think I've. I'm, I think I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm near near the limit on toil. Toiling's fine because I see the money on the horizon. I guess oh, that's a big, big difference. Money. I do not see the money on the oh, horizon. Huge money. <laughs> uh, but uh, I see that, so that's fine. Yeah, that's fair. crunch is cool if you own your business 100 percent and you're the only person doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, go for it. It's fine. It's it's actually 
not not so bad uh, if you own your own business and you know that you stand to reap 100% of the profits, crunch rules. Uh, that's my recommendation for this week. Uh, <laughs> own, own 100% of your profits and crunch. It, it's good. Um, and then die very young, <laughs> which uh, I managed to avoid having reached at least my midlife crisis. What am I talking about? Yeah, I'm going to watch that X-Men cartoon. Yeah. yeah. I will say one bad thing about it. Oh, let's hear it. One bad thing about it is that uh, like... You know, there's there's sort of the cold open usually, and then like yeah. the theme song starts, and it's that song, and it's, it's the one yeah. theme song. Well, they redid it and stuff, and ah, uh, uh, don't you redo? The bad part is that uh, I kind of feel something when it starts, and I don't uh, like that about myself. Yeah, so. it's okay. You're <laughs> okay. Uh, you're not quite forty three years old, but you're almost there. You're almost, <laughs> almost that guy. There. So I know we all watched the 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 Disney Plus uh, series Miss Marvel. I know we all watched that because uh, <laughs> we're all big Kamala Khan fans in here. <laughs> when they reveal and the post credit scene of the final episode of Miss Marvel. This isn't a joke, mm-hmm. by the way. When they reveal in the post credit scene yeah. of the final episode of Miss Marvel that she's actually got a genetic mutation mm-hmm. yeah and then you hear s- quietly in the background the, uh, da, 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 i was da, about da. to say the first few <laughs> notes but that would be underselling it because it's all the notes the first few yeah. notes yeah. of the x-men that's cartoon the theme music is all the notes uh, yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 da. that's the whole song <laughs> that's the whole song the the, the figurative uh you know the proverbial uh, Beastie Boys karaoke where you repeat the, yeah. the first line of the song over and over again. Well, now, don't you tell me to stop. Don't yeah. you tell me. Yeah. Like, we've done that before. Me and my buddy used to do that um, oh, with I, our friends. I do that uh, too, uh, working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, when I heard that at the end of the Miss Marvel show, I instantly felt, ah, uh, oh, man, if they they're going to bring that cartoon back, and then there's going to be a part. How much of it have you watched, Frank? Is it all out yet? Or is there's it only out? Like, four episodes, right? Yeah, oh, there's okay. only four so far, and I've watched. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this in advance, and uh, they're going to connect it to Ant Man or the Wasp oh, I or hope they Ult- Ultron or somebody. Yeah. They're going to connect it, yeah. and there's going to be probably at some point three or four minutes. That unless you've watched every single movie, there's going to be about three or four minutes in an upcoming episode where probably you don't understand god darn anything anyone's talking about. Uh, and then well, hopefully it'll just go right back to being about They want to ruin it. Yeah. That's I, a, be- that's I believe way. that's going to happen. I believe yeah. I believe yeah. both of the things you just said will happen. I believe that they will incorporate it um, and then like never discuss it again. And yeah, continue yeah. on doing it's their very It's all and that – time pool scene from age of ultron because i believe they will continue doing seasons of this too i don't think yeah. they're, that would be yeah. nice yeah five years from now there will be an x-men movie and uh it it yeah. can't be good because i've seen them spider-mans um those people they got no idea what they're doing they're really in the, is in no the writing out. department no idea what they're doing anyway if you want to see something where somebody does kind of have an idea what they're doing um i watched the netflix series the three body problem mm. someone recently i'm a big fan of that book i did also enjoy the joke imagine having only three body problems yeah very good joke <laughs> Pretty good very good joke, joke. good joke um, it's a very good joke um i mean i don't know if i'd say it's a very good joke no no it's, um, a, it's, it's an all right enough. joke i uh i killed four people in a video game and such that their corpses all landed in the same place and i said netflix released the sequel to the three body problem already <laughs> um, yeah i saw that but if you want to watch <laughs> uh, a show that's based on a book that has uh i don't want to spoil anything because it's a uh, a highly uh stupidly cacophonously ridiculously spoilerable story that has big ideas goes big places but uh if you put the show on you will find that it does have a feel of like a sort of early 2000s bbc uh sci-fi uh, miniseries or whatever which is nice. about a bunch of little buddyistic characters uh uh helping each other or whatever um, it's about science, but if you, uh, if you hang out with it, when they start unleashing the, the heavy science concepts and, uh, the big plot mechanisms, uh, you'll know when it's, when it gets good, you'll know there's a, there's a moment where you see a thing. I'm sitting there, uh, just, uh, high as heck at two in the morning and I'm like, oh man, I know what's going to happen. And then some stuff happens and you're like, yeah, dude. And you just feel like you're high as heck. And once, you know, it's, it's neat. It's a, it's a, not to, not the best TV show I've ever seen. However, if you've never read the books, you might as well watch the show. Okay. 
All right. It uh, much has been made of the fact that the show is about um, global people from multiple countries, whereas the book is about Chinese people in China. However, I believe they it is very meaningfully presented. I read the book in Chinese, by the way. Uh, just you know, just tooting my own horn a little bit here. In the Chinese version of the book, they moved the Chinese Cultural Revolution plot to somewhere near the middle. The author did that on purpose. Uh, so as to avoid the Chinese censors, apparently, the urban legend goes. Uh, the Netflix series, which is produced by the Game of Thrones guys, believe it or not, uh, they they rightly, with the author's uh, approval, move it to the very beginning. If you're, if you're, if you're, I don't know if the word fan applies, a buff, am I a buff of the Chinese Cultural Revolution? That's what you call it when you're a fan of something that it's not, that's not good. I'm a big buff on Chinese cultural revolution history. I think it's one of the most important things that has ever happened uh, in the history of the world. And it's important for people to look at it and understand it. And I think the three body problem engages with that history in oh, such a spectacularly meaningful way and gives you some cool lenses to consider Chinese history, but also uh, with some really sweet, crazy sci-fi involved and as i'm saying this i notice all all three of the other people in the podcast are just looking at other stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody nobody hears it nobody hears a chinese cultural revolution buff yeah no this isn't for us this is for the listener i got some ebay shopping to do man uh, yeah. yeah yeah i mean we i'm refreshing Charles. my email we'll inbox do. over here that's um, okay Early, at, at the start of the, the episode i was uh talking about a uh, uh a carjacking in my neighborhood to absolute crickets nobody was interested whatsoever so uh, <laughs> i wasn't there you you weren't there it was uh, it was a situation where i w- it was serious enough that i didn't know what to say <laughs> i saw okay. a grubhub driver get hit by a car two days ago does that count oh man <sighs> no, i didn't care <laughs> <laughs> i've got some recommendations how about that my recommendation is don't order food if you can just go out and get some just make some yeah if it's god darn raining torrential rain with a flood warning don't order a god darn grub hub yeah those guys are dying true. out there like seriously yeah, i agree and also tip them a lot if you do yes mm-hmm. but uh, on days of fair weather and never leave a review unless it's five stars okay i do a ten dollar minimum tip uh, yeah, that, I, I tip a hundred percent, but I actually haven't ordered it in over a, a year. So people have been rating and reviewing our show, and that's something we appreciate. Uh, like B. Renoir, who wrote, "I understood the basement callback. It was obvious and also a good joke." Okay, uh, you can also support us on Patreon.com/slash Insert Credit to pay everyone involved in this show except one person. You can guess who. Uh, if you'd it's like me. to sponsor our show it's with him. an advertisement or personal message. Uh, please do that by writing into show at insertcredit.com and we'll talk. Uh, you can also join our community at the newly refurbished forums.insertcredit.com or find videos of these very episodes with specially curated visuals to enhance your insert credit experience on youtube.com slash insert credit show. This episode is edited by Esper Quinn with music by Kurt Feldman. I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Frank Cifaldi. I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And I ain't tired of toiling yet. Tired of toiling.